listening to a hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from our children, let me also invite two or three to say something on a topic called Tawheed, monotheism, oneness of Allah. How do we keep to this so that we meet Allah? So we invite Brother Sabir Yusuf, Sabril Yusuf, Brother Sabril Yusuf, oh, sister, sorry, sister Sabril Yusuf. Please, let's go to the podium now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's me, Sabrina Yusuf. Me in academia to Daru Huda Saitek. Mama na la ila illa lo. Mana ha la ma buju be akin illa lo. What is the meaning of la ila illa lo? La ila illa lo means there's no God worthy to be worshipped but Allah. Atakbir. This is the second time you are hearing La ilaha illallah. Wallahi, if you believe in any other system, no one deserved to trust Wallahi for your security other than Allah. For anything, please let's re return back to Allah in totality by believing in Him alone. We invite uh sabir yusuf the first one is sabril the second one now is sabir yusuf inshallah and his partner assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa it's me, Sabir Yusuf. Min Akademia Tidaru Huda Saitek. It's me, Muhammad Nurdin Abdul Safana. Min Akademia Tidaru Huda Saitek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, mi akhi. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, mi Sabir. Ya Nurdin, Limada Kolako Allahu. Why did Allah create you? Allah created me for worshiping. The Kauli Hita Allah, she said. Wama Kola Kotul Jin Nawalin Sailla Yahudu. I have not created mankind and jinn except for them to worship me. Masha Allah, fear man in love. Allah, this is the shortest drama I've ever seen within one minute. I'm most powerful. The essence of creation to worship Allah has been dramatized by these powerful you know, upcoming scholars. Finally, we invite Kamaluddin Isa to come and present you know, Tawheed, inshallah. Kamaluddin and his partner that will inshallah present now. Security. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya Abdul Rahman. Ya Abdul Rahman, man nabiyuka wa bimaja'a? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ja'a bi dini islami. Alladhi la yaqadullahu lawma kiyam fi dina wa barakatuh. Qala Allahu ta'ala, inna dina inna allahi al-islam. Allah the Messiah said, The only religion in the side of Allah is Islam. MashaAllah, fi amanillah. Takbir. 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 Inna dina in the Allah al Islam. They have really demonstrated for us that the deen in the law is al Islam. The only religion. Accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Islam. You pray to Allah through the way of Islam. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for our children. They have reintroduced Islam to us. Don't joke with your Islam. Oh. Allah is the only ID card. You can show Allah after death. So may Allah preserve it for us. May Allah put the jal to shame. Who is targeting to take away our shaitan? Uh, our Imam, 
it is now your time akra wa allah the guest speaker who will inshallah will carry my light in all of us the stage of islam today and the next step we should take to get it right particularly at home sheikh tajuddin adigo muhammad bello phd the chairman of all imams of fct ala wa salam wa marhaban ya sheikh jazakallah khaira please pay attentive to this short talk from our grand imam akrawakallah wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin nabiyina muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man da'a bi da'watihi ila an taqumuddin amma ba'du the chairman of this occasion the chairman of sima professor sali abdullah major general gs abdullah from defense headquarters fct here in abuja uh, i feel honored to see the general in our mix because uh, these personalities are not ordinary and especially when they reach the position of being generous uh, they used to feel they are not even human beings uh, but we know they are but they are not ordinary you are welcome sir uh, a lot has to be done in your field so that so many generals will be attending this type of occasions the chief imam my own imam personally Chief Imam Idris Shuaibu, the Imam of Life Camp Central Mosque. The Chief Imam of Usman bin Affan, Dr. Umar Yanda. The Chief Imam of Saitek and equally the Headmaster of Darul Huda Islamic Academy. The Chief Imam of Form 1. Masjid Sheikh Abdul Gai, uh, our mothers who are here are present, all other parents, teachers of Nurul Huda, students, gentlemen of the press, security personnel, brothers and sisters. Permit me to stand on the existing protocols. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have to apologize really for coming in late. I supposed to be the first person to be here apart from the Imam of Saitek. Unfortunately, I have to be in the airport to see the airlifting of the pilgrims, the first pilgrims living from the FCT of this year's pilgrimage. And I have to uh, apologize there for being here because I promised and accepted the invitation before another official assignment given to me. So I apologize sincerely to all those who are present. It is not an Islamic occasion and especially when it discusses the issue of Quran, that you come late. The topic I'm being given to discuss is a topic I'm not competent enough to handle. More so, you must have heard the chairman of Imams and the chairman of this. It is not actually the fact. I remain the servant of all the other Imams been the youngest of them and the one they feel free to touch and to reach at all moments. That's why the topic is very heavy and big to be discussed. The area of knowledge and especially when you are talking of Islamic knowledge is very broad and wide. It's beyond the understanding of the common Western man of a knowledge of enjoying this life with what Allah has blessed you of knowledge. It is more far than that. 
it is a knowledge that makes you so different even among your colleagues because of the impact that the knowledge has on you. Unfortunately, today, knowledge is being seen as decoration and levels of being professor, doctor, master's holder, degree holder. These are names that are given to us by the Western culture. And uh, we so believe in them that it's even at times eradicating the real knowledge as far as Islam is concerned. It is a knowledge of action. And that's why the best of those whom Allah has blessed with knowledge are the prophets. I've itemized my discussion so that it's going to be simple and easy. Students and the speech being read, I find out that you have discussed this area intensively. And I will quote a verse that I've been quoted earlier, which inform a Muslim that knowledge is not actually what should be, be, be kept behind. It should be always in front. It's key, it's primary. Allah says to Prophet that the area and the issue of knowledge is key to any success in life. Prophet Muhammad is the most loved and dear to Allah in all he has created. With all the qualities he has of goodness and character that the Meccans nicknamed him Al Amin before the revelation of these verses we have quoted. But still, for him to be leader of mankind and for him to be exemplary to all mankind, particularly the Muslims, Allah said to him, Iqra, read. And he said, I don't know how to read. He was forced by Angel Jibril to read. He said, I'm not among those who are reading. And that comes about these five verses of Quran. And if you look critically, source of you being knowledgeable is for you to read. You must read for you to be knowledgeable. And for that knowledge to be blessed, it must be in the name of Allah. That's why today we have a number of those who are knowledgeable, but the knowledge is negative. Today in this country, Nigeria can be proud of having professionals in all fields of endeavor that can not only lead this country, but it can lead the world because of intellectualism of Nigerians. Either in military, and Alhamdulillah, the general can testify to that. In engineering, in medicine, when you talk of the Quran, Nigerians have competed with a number of other countries and they came first in the whole world. I always say this in occasions, that Nigerians are not left behind in the Quran. They are involved. Not only involved, they are actually, actually a country that is recognized by the whole world in knowing the Quran. There was an occasion in, this, in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia where highly placed individuals gathered. And I could remember among the key individuals present there is the former Emir of Kano State, Alaji Sanusi Lami, he was among those who were there in Jeddah. A student in Abuja here was called to recite the Quran. I'm lucky to be among those who are far behind, last seat in the occasion. And when this gentleman started reading, in fact, you will think he's not a Nigerian. And he graduated here in Abuja among our schools here. And you know his course in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? He's a medical student, the best in his faculty in Jeddah. And that tells you Okay, it's on. Sorry. That can we change it? And and that tells you 
Quran can be the best in all fields. It can be the best in politics. It can be the best in military. Because that brain that contains the Quran is not ordinary brain. Look, a memorizer of the Quran is bigger than computer. Because that book you are seeing, which Allah has praises a lot, we reveal the book unto you and we are guiding the book. And that makes somebody who memorized the book to be different entirely. Entirely different. Look, if you look at the pages, that memorizer is having every single sentence in his brain. He opens the pages one after the other from Bakara till Nas. He knows where comma is. He knows where full stop is. He knows where he should stop. He knows where he should fast. He knows everything that is in the Quran. You cannot have anybody except a Muslim having this quality. And an Igbo man can memorize it. A Yoruba, a Fulani, who are not even Arabs. Look, because of the miraculous nature of the Quran, somebody from Africa here will memorize the Quran. He doesn't know any word of Arabic. And he will recite better than the Arabs. And he will compete with the Arabs who are speaking Arabic in, in their mother's womb better than them because it's a book Allah has revealed to mankind. Look, you cannot memorize a page of Yoruba right up if you are a full animal. You will spend years without memorizing it. At the very moment you start reciting it or reading it, a Yoruba man will laugh at you. But look at the Quran. Because Allah has given the Quran to all mankind and he is it for, all, for us. Unfortunately, the Ummah claim intellectualism without the Quran. Today we have produced professors who cannot read the Quran among the Muslims. We have produced a number of individuals who are holding strategic, strategic positions of leadership without knowing the Quran. And they don't want to know the Quran. And they are not willing to be encouraged the Quran. Now, this is the, light, the dilemma the Ummah is in. The knowledge of the Quran cannot be compared with any other knowledge. Allah says, it contains everything you want. It is a zikr, a reminder, a book of history, a book of sciences. Look, Allah described the whole sciences in only one verse of the Quran. People are surprised when they have this from ulamas of sciences themselves. Allah says, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard, wa khtila fi layli wal nahar, wal fulki lati tajri fil bahari, bima yanfaun nas, wa ma anzal allahu min al samai min ma'in, fa ahya bil ard ba'da mawtiha, wa basta fiha min kulli daba, wa tzifur riya, wa sahabil musakhari bayna samai wal ardi la ayati li kawmi yakilun. There is no area of science that this verse 177 of 2 did not discuss. Even the flowing of mighty ships on the sea, which is designed by engineers and scientists, are discussed. The heaven as mighty as it is, the geography, the agriculture, all are discussed and summarized in only one verse. That's why the root of real sciences are in the Quran. Unfortunately, the Ummah today are sleeping in slumber. And that's why a kafir will laugh at you when you don't even know this world. And our grandparents have known it better than them. We refuse to even be good students to them so as to learn and become better. We prefer to live a life of happiness and joy and enjoyment. Even if at the expense of sacrificing the enjoyment that's everlasting on the day of Yama. It is only a fool. It is only a fool who will be given one million years and only a hundred years and he will prefer to enjoy that hundred better than the millions of years coming up. Only a fool will do that. That's why a number of verses Allah will address Kufar as they are not sensing. Or those who are not using the knowledge are not sensing. Because in this, they are foolish because the life coming is billions of years. Billions of years for enjoyment. If really you want to enjoy, sacrifice the little years you have here and get it right there. But when you refuse, you still suffer here and the suffering there is endless. 
So let us encourage knowledge. Allah says, "Kud hal yasawil ladina yalamun, wal ladina la yalamun." In the mind of the Karhul al Albab, are you going to compare those who are knowledgeable with those who are ignorant? It is out of knowledge that you can hear me from a far distance with the little voice I have. It's knowledge. It's knowledge that will make the whole world to be seeing this program. At the moment we are delivering it, it's knowledge. This knowledge is not a monopoly of the West. It is for those who struggle for it, Allah will give them. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهَدِيَنَّهُمْ سُولَنَا Our own is not only the enjoyment, but added with guidance. That's why Allah says in the Quran, testifying the true individuals that are qualified to become knowledgeable. He said, شَهِدَ اللَّهُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ وَأُولُ الْإِلْمُ قَائِمًا بِالْقَصْدِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ Allah says, He himself testify that none deserve to be worshipped except Him, Allah. And the angels who are not sinning, who are not drinking, who are not eating, who are not male, who are not female, who are not having desire, who are not sleeping, they also testify that Allah alone deserves to be worshipped. Then Allah said the third group are those who have a knowledge. And that's why any Muslim who doesn't have knowledge cannot guarantee the authenticity of his Islam. And that's why we have Muslims who are ignorant of the deen to the expert, you cannot even distinguish them between a non-Muslim. Brothers and sisters here present, the area of knowledge is very, very critical and is preferred over any favor on earth. Much more than positions, much more than children and wealth, much more than anything you can seek for in this life. And that's why Allah gave the messengers knowledge. Not money. It's not all messengers that are rich. In fact, not all of them that marries. Not all of them are having children. But all of them are blessed with knowledge. And that makes knowledge to be distinct in any fable. And especially the knowledge of the Quran. Allah says, Inna awhayna ilayka kama awhayna ila nuhim wa nabiyyina min ba'di wa awhayna ila Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Isaac wa Yaqub wa Isaac to the end of the verse, he mentions a series of prophets whom he said, We have revealed unto you, Muhammad Wasallam. Likewise, great messengers like Abraham, like Solomon, like Dao, David, all of them are blessed with knowledge. And Allah says, We talked to Musa, Moses, wasalam, talking, knowledge. Unfortunately, today, the Ummah is lacking. We are not supposed to compete with anybody without beating him down in knowledge. When we do that, it means we are not serious. Because Allah has blessed knowledge so much so that whosoever seeks for it will get it. It can be little, it can be moderate, it can be highest, even though all you are giving according to Allah is little. No matter how level of knowledge you have attained to, when you are discussing the Quran, your knowledge actually is a small one. And that's why Allah commanded Rasulullah to ask for additional knowledge. Allah did not ask him to add for anything. Because everything had been done to him. ilma. Say to Allah, Allah should increase you in knowledge because the more you are increased in knowledge, a meaningful knowledge, the more you are closer to Allah because you implement the content of the knowledge. That's why the companion said, Kunna na ta'allam ashara ayatim ma kunna na ta'jawazha we used to learn the Quran 10 verses. You will not proceed to another 10 until one who understands the meaning and will implement the contents. And that's how we learn the Quran and then we learn implementation of the Quran together. Sisters and brothers present, Adam والسلام, was preferred over angels who are not sinning at all because of his knowledge. That scored knowledge to be very high. Very, very high. If angels are not eating, they are not drinking, they are not sleeping, they are not male, they are not female, they don't go against Allah's wish an inch. But Adam, as we are his children, are sinners. But Allah commanded the angels to bow before Adam. And he mentioned the reason. The reason is knowledge. 
when they were asked to itemize and to name, they were unable. Ulna ya Adam ambihum bi asma'im falamma ambahum bi asma'im qala alam akul lakum inni a'lamu gaiba samawati wal ard wa alam ma tukuduna ma kuntum tatkunu wa izkunna lil malaikati suru li adam fasajid This is the only area you can use to testify that a knowledgeable person is an important person with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of whatsoever it's not ordinary the angels have to bow before him because he know what they know not that's why we must be in front in all fields of endeavors when it comes to knowledge of politics we should be the best when it comes to engineering we should be the best when it comes to law we should be the best when it comes to military we should be the best when it comes to any field there is no any excuse for a muslim to be behind no excuse Now, the role of parents. Parents have a key role to play in making their children to be intellectuals. And they also have the role in making them to be useless in the society. We are lucky today in this country, we have the number. Don't listen to anybody who will tell you that you don't have the number. That person is joking. We are blessed with the number. And we are blessed if Nigeria is going to live for the next one billion years. We are going to live in the number. Tell me why. We are polygamous in nature. Nobody can deny this. Which I would like our mothers to close their hearings. We are polygamous and no apology to anybody. That's the case with all the powerful messengers of Allah. In the Quran and the Bible. Because the more your number, the more powerful you are. And democracy came to justify that. Even though it has its own actually shortcomings. It has its own problems. But it justified that number is a power. When you are numberless, you are powerless. When you have the number, you have the power. Except if you refuse to use the power. And that's why here, at this junction, I will encourage you are marrying more than wife to marry more. And to have children of blessing. Those who read the Quran, do you know why? On the day of Iyama, any of your child that reads the Quran, the reward will reflect automatically in your account of goodness. And that's why it's a warrior, somebody who will control a polygamous family with having kids trained. You have a doctor in the family memorize the Quran. You have an engineer memorize the Quran. You have somebody who read politics memorize the Quran. You have somebody who is a teacher memorize the Quran. You have everybody that memorize the Quran. And then you are going to govern the world, not only in Nigeria. So our number is the number we should be proud of. If we have the number of knowledge. Unfortunately, unfortunately, and that is the reality, it's a number that is not potential in the field of, uh, of knowledge. Number where you have a very big percentage roaming about on the streets in the land of learning, which was done in past centuries with dignity and honor, and life is changing, and everything has to change together with. We are not here to condemn our method of learning, the Almighty system of education. When you want to marry, and you are a teacher, either Islamia teacher, or Quran teacher, or teacher in one uh, Islamia school, then you introduce yourself by hiding the identity of your profession because they know you are poor. And that's why our education is far backward. Because our teachers are not proud of their profession. It's seen to be a profession of those who are poor. And this idea must be changed. Else we are not valuing knowledge. During my first degree in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, with the Arabs together in Medina, Students who read Sharia in the faculty as indigents are already from their allowances buying cars because they promote knowledge in Saudi Arabia. And you know, wonderfully, if you graduated, you cannot be a teacher except one, one very key. Even if you are first class material, you can't be a teacher until when you have the stakeholders recognize with a good profile and CV, two of them should stand for you. That you can teach. Not only you can teach, but you, you can impact morality in the children.
Yes, I will stop. I will stop, please. I mean, teacher, I will stop. <laughs> The organizers are telling me to stop because they don't like teachers too. <laughs> they teachers are, are poor. You see, you, they must stand for you before you became a teacher there. It's not ordinary person as a teacher. Your salaries are high scale. You compete with any other person. When you are appointed as a teacher and appointment is given to you, you show it to all your family members. When you want to marry, you select whosoever you want to marry. It's not your, to your hand. Your, if you say you're a teacher, the only thing is to confirm, is it true you're a teacher? Not only a lecturer, but a primary teacher is proud to show policeman, to show army, to show anywhere. Anywhere there are restrictions that is possible for you to enter, a teacher has automatic, automatic privilege of entering. I look at the situation of teachers in the country. Not only the Islamic teachers, even the teachers who are going to teach what we qualify, qualify what was qualified to be Western education are very, very poor. And that's why they're exhausted. And that's why they cannot be the best of what they have. And that's why they are jumping from one ministry to another with applications to leave teaching. And any nation that does not concentrate on teachers, call that nation a zero nation. That nation is going to fall. No amount of security can make security to be provided. It is those who are having knowledge that know the right and the wrong things to do and not to do. You continue to exploit, to exploit and then to utilize the personnel of security and they cannot give security. Because assignment has not been done on Nigerians to secure themselves. When you have criminals, almost 20% or 30% of the nation, you must have security personnel who are the same percentage. And let me tell you, among the security personnel, too, there are those who are not secured. Because the knowledge is not proper one. So we are in dilemma. The key word here is that all of us should turn to learning. A Muslim to the Quran. I've been informed that my time is off. I know it's meant for well so that other things will be discussed. Government should play a better role. And here, with all loud voice, we must make sure our curriculums are blinded with the fear of Allah whether Muslims or Christians. Until we do this, the situation is going to be more worst. Because it is when you attach somebody with Allah that he would never think of doing evil as a Muslim. And the same thing in Christianity. At least to safeguard the right of others. As we are now seated here, as I'm coming, I park my car far away. And I was striking I saw a number of securities in plain clothes and in uniform, some even the well armed. It is because people don't have knowledge. You don't need to go up to that length in the location of this nature that is civic in nature. But still with these people are not secured because they are ignorant of the consequence of being a criminal. When you read the Quran and you know for my Amal Mizkar Sharra Yara, you deter. Even if you see the key of the car there, you will never take it. You will never take it. Why should you? I thank you for the time given to me. Government should grind the curriculum. I think the microphone too is telling me to leave. <laughs> Government should grind the curriculum with fear of Allah by introducing the region compulsorily. Not the few lines, uh, CRK on IRK, no. A committed serious syllabus that children will fear Allah right from nursery to primary, to secondary school, to all tertiary institutions. I thank you for listening. I apologize for coming late. And I apologize to you that I'm going to leave. I have another commitment awaiting. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. Our doctor, our imam. Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah for you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve you. Allahu Akbar. Sheikh Dr. Imam Tajuddin Adigu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you abundantly. This is powerful and we, we must listen, comprehend and put this into practice. Alhamdulillah. Our Imam
May Allah reward you abundantly. Jamaa salamu alaikum. Imam has reminded us what makes Islam sweeter today is the knowledge that kept spreading from one generation to another. And Imam has pointed out that it's like we are dropping the real knowledge of Islam aside and try to vie and dance for other, you know, education that we, we may like believing such kind of fields of study are more better than the real subject of Allah, Quran and Sunnah. We must look inward, which is look into Quran to give birth to our own science and technology and medical way of life so that we can at least live the best for our children. We have the opportunity, the, 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 well without to do that. But we are leaving Quran one side. Please let us embrace it in all ramifications. Our Imam, may Allah reward you abundantly.